What a, a fantastic evening. Thank you all for being here. I'm humbled thus far by your generosity with the raffle, with the auction. <laughs> Asking me to speak in public is like watching a dog walk on its hind legs. <laughs> Even if it's not done well, you're amazed it can be done at all. <laughs> Hopefully the video gave you an idea of who we are and why we exist. I realize that there are probably a few of you in this room that have never climbed a mountain, a rock, or even rafted down a river. Even without these experiences, each of us can look back in our life and point to a time where we face adversity. Peaks haven't utilized the, the adversity that God's creation throws at us to help teach kids lessons through our white water rafting, our backpacking, climbing, and uh, winter trips. <clears throat> kids like DJ, that you just saw in the video, and also the young man, Andre, who had gotten in trouble with the law and uh, was serving over 2,000 hours of community service. He's 15, and uh, he grew up with foster parents. He started smoking and drinking at the age of nine with his foster parents. By the time he was 11, he had started injecting drugs and doing meth with those responsible for his care. He couldn't read, and he was involved in gang activity. In fact, he showed up to the first Peak 7 trip in his gang colors. All right? Um, The week before he came on uh, his first big trip with us, um, he, his, he had been in a detention center on the, on the west side in Seattle, and his mom and sister had gone over to visit him. And on their way home, they got in a car wreck and they both passed away. Yeah. Imagine the guilt he was dealing with when he showed up for our trip. You know, thinking things like, man, only I hadn't been imprisoned, my mom and sister might still be alive. In that same week, his brother was stabbed to death by a cousin in a gang-related murder. Tough story. Tough life. Hard kid. Not much hope. Andre's tough exterior changed quickly in the wilderness. He experienced extreme fear as we scrambled to higher elevations. We were able to, to just comfort him and talk him through that specific fear, and he overcame that fear. You know, the wilderness provided a time for Andre, maybe for the first time in his life, to experience um, being able to talk about some of his insecurities and fears. A year later, Oh, and, and up and up and else, guys, we were just able to show them that he's loved, kind of like what you saw in the video. We're here to just love on kids. A year later, he came on a third trip with Peak 7, and it was there that he accepted Christ. You guys, that is why I do what I do. There's... There's too much hurt in this world for us not to act. Stories like Andre's hopefully give you an idea of why P7 exists. I'll tell you why I started P7. Uh, well, I'll have to take you back to my childhood because so much of who you become and what you believe is shaped by your growing up years. I am the proverbial middle child in a family of five sons. I was diagnosed at an early age with ADD, which, coupled with my speech impediment and hearing problems, made for a nice cocktail of awkwardness. <laughs> As you can imagine, I struggled in school, all the way through high school. But I, get, but I had a strong family and a unique childhood. My parents were medical missionaries, so I spent most of my younger years overseas. For six years, we lived in Ecuador in the Amazon rainforest. We could see active volcanoes of the Andes Mountains from our house. And then for two years, we lived in Kenya. Our backyard literally was a great rift valley. My brothers and I used to shoe baboons out of our garden, not shoot, shoot, baboon, out of our garden, and chase zebra in the valley below. I guess that's where you could say I got my love for adventure and travel. When I was 13, I climbed to the top of the 17,000 foot peak of Mount Kenya. 
Just like the kids we take out, the lessons I learned and what I experienced climbing that mountain will stay with me for the rest of my life. Hard work, perseverance, accomplishment, how small we are, and how big God is. As the psalmist tells us, I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. But by the time I was 15, we had uh, moved back to the United States and settled down near Charleston, South Carolina. For several summers in high school, I worked at a camp in Oregon. And I discovered there's two things I really enjoyed. Working with kids and being outside. Mm -hmm. I loved adrenaline. I wasn't exactly sure what to do with this. Um, but I ran into a beautiful young lady there, and uh, Lauren who shared my enthusiasm for youth and outdoor adventure. After we graduated, I took her to an exotic, tropical paradise <laughs> and proposed to her. She said yes. <clears throat> that summer we got married and moved here to Spokane. That was 2004. I spent a lot of time kayaking on the Spokane River. And I would see groups of young kids on the shoreline drinking breaking bottles, I'd even find needles in the water. And I thought to myself, man, how do you get these kids to appreciate and steward the river? Lauren began working as a recreational therapist at a treatment center for youth in town. Meanwhile, I took a job working at a software company that does online registration for camps. While I was there, I went backpacking with my boss in Glacier National Park. And uh, in talking, we discovered a mutual interest in and uh, outdoor adventure and youth ministry. That weekend, seeds were planted that two years later would grow to become Peak 7 Adventures. You guys, I had no idea how fast Peak 7 would grow from an idea to having offices in three different locations and two states. You know, we've already given you some numbers, but in, 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 to give you a kind of a picture, in 2006, we served 137 youth. In comparison, this last year, we served just over 3,000. Yeah. Yeah, the only way, <laughs> I love talking, um, the only way that kind of growth is possible is through God's provision and generosity of our supporters, like you. Peak 7 exists to provide hope for a generation of kids, often referred to as a hopeless generation. I don't think that they're hopeless guys. They just haven't been shown where there is hope. Often, due to circumstances outside of these kids' control, they're stuck in a downward spiral of fractured family, family relationships, drug and alcohol abuse, failure in school, and trouble with the law. Unless something changes in these kids' lives, they're headed for joblessness, poverty, even prison. You know, the world doesn't have much to offer these kids. But God does. I really love working with tough kids. You know, I can remember a trip, a rafting trip I was on, where the, the trip we had that day was a, was a trip with a treatment center in town. And uh, after every trip, we, we do a debrief session where we allow uh, the participants to basically comment and share about their experience. Well, this kid told the group, hey, this is the first time in my life that I experienced a high that wasn't from drugs. You guys, that's, we're, we're sharing with these kids a natural high that unlike drugs, is good for them. A unique aspect of Peak 7 is that we partner with other organizations to help them further the impact that they're having on kids. We provide a first-rate trip that these other great organizations would not be able to facilitate on their own, at least not to the high level of professionalism and safety that we offer. A common theme I hear from, from leaders that come on trips from the organizations is that uh, you know, they'll work with these kids sometimes for a number of years and have never had the kind of breakthrough bond they get with kids on trips with us. When you take anyone and you stick them into the wilderness, the, the playing field level, socioeconomic and social barriers uh, dwindle in a very short period of time. Keep in mind that when you support Peak 7, you're also invested in the ministry of our partner organizations, like Youth for Christ, Union Gospel Mission, the YMCA, Teen Challenge, Crosswalk, churches, 
and so many others. As I transition tonight, I share with you my passion. I share with you a little bit about how we've gotten here. And now I want to take a moment and share with you the vision. Imagine this, a community climbing gym where kids can come in and climb. And individuals like you and our amazing team of volunteers can spend quality time with kids. No longer will we have the need to cancel a trip due to weather. And it takes what we do and transitions it, at least a program, from a seasonal organization to a year-round program. That's where we're going long term. It's going to take a few steps to get there. For this next year, we're just excited about being able to serve right around 3,300 participants, as well as Brewer, Seattle, and Oregon branches, in order to serve our kids. For those of you in this room, and I see a lot of you, that have supported us in prayer, time, and money, thank you. And I just ask if you would consider continue to join us in this adventure. For those of you, the rest of you, we're inviting you to join us through this. Thank you so much for being here tonight.